Tonight, we look back at a legend, an extraordinary woman, one whom I was fortunate to have known and interviewed over a period of 20 years. Tonight, we honor the life and the legacy of Katherine Houghton Hepburn. Closest to her older brother, Tom, of all her siblings, she suffered a devastating loss when she found him dead, the victim of an apparent accidental hanging. She nevertheless found within herself resilience and perseverance, qualities that served her well in coping with tragedy and setbacks throughout her life. Each of these parts of her childhood helped form the Hepburn we came to know. She came from really strong stock, you know. She came from a family that uh, really instilled in her the value of the individual. She really stood for something. She stood for a point of view, and she stood for a sort of sense of integrity and truthfulness. She said, you know, coming to Bryn Mawr and staying here and completing it was the hardest thing I ever did and the best thing. And in this world, you'll find that very often it's the hardest things that turn out to be the most important. Well, Miss Hepburn would not have thought of herself, I think, as a quintessential Bryn Mawr alumna. Uh, but in many ways she was, uh, because she was smart. Uh, she was uh, a th thoughtful person, and she was extremely independent. Bryn Mawr was Hepburn's destiny, a Houghton tradition begun when her two aunts attended the school. Her mother entered Bryn Mawr's class of 1899 at the age of 16, earning degrees in chemistry and physics. And just as New England helped mold her childhood, Bryn Mawr helped mold her womanhood. It was there her passion for acting took hold, there where she first became active in theater, graduating in 1928. After a rocky start on Broadway, she signed with RKO, demanding what she thought she was worth, as a man would, $1,500 a week, an outlandish sum at the time. Tapped by producer David O. Selznick and director George Cukor to make her screen debut in a bill of divorcement in 1932. 